wish all of you a very ha happy and prosperous 2014 and welcome you to this press interaction of the Honorable Prime Minister. May I, with your permission, set the ground rules for this interaction because I know that all of you would be anxious to ask your question, but obviously there is a certain paucity and a constraint of time. Therefore, uh, the Honorable Prime Minister would read out his opening statement, and after that, I'll try and identify as many of you as possible so that you get a chance to ask that question. But I would request you to bear with me uh, because, as I said, there, there is a certain limitation that we have in terms of time. And uh, with that, I would request all of you to kindly switch off the mobile phones. And uh, now I would like to welcome the Honorable Prime Minister and request him to please uh, address all of us. Ladies and gentlemen, let me wish you all a very happy new year. Let me say at the outset that I do believe we are set for better times. The cycle of global economic growth is turning for the better. Many of the steps we have taken to address our domestic constraints are coming into play. India's own growth momentum will revive. An important development in the year that has gone by is the demonstration of the strength of our democracy. Our people have demonstrated their faith in the institutions of democracy by voting in record numbers in the recent assembly elections. Our party did not do well in these elections, but we welcome the extent of participation and we will reflect on what the results tell us for the future and learn appropriate lessons. Our democratic constitution and the institutions of our democracy are the cornerstones of modern India. All of us who wish to build a better India, rid of poverty and corruption, must respect these institutions and work through them. They are the legitimate instruments in our hands with all their limitations. No one individual or authority can substitute for the due processes of democratic governments. Friends, over the past decade, we have been through many ups and downs. During my first term in office, India witnessed for the first time in its recorded history a sharp acceleration of the rate of economic growth to 9%. This exceptional performance was followed by a slowdown initiated by the global financial crisis. Over the past couple of years, all emerging economies have experienced a slowdown. India was no exception. Economies have ups and downs, and we should not focus overtly, overly on the short term. We should recognize that even if we include the years of slowdown, the rate of growth achieved in the past nine years is the highest for any nine-year period. And it is not just the acceleration of growth that gives me satisfaction. Equally important is the fact that we made the growth process 
more socially inclusive than it has ever been. In 2004, I committed our government to what I said would be a new deal for rural India. I believe we have delivered on that promise very substantially. We followed former friendly policies, including raising support prices for farm produce, expanding credits to farmers, and through increased investment in horticulture, in rural development, and rural infrastructure, especially roads and electricity. The Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme has assured agricultural labor of a floor and has increased their bargaining power. Improved delivery of health and education services is giving new hope to our brothers and sisters living in rural areas of our country. These initiatives have ensured that agricultural GDP has grown faster than ever before. India has become one of the world's largest producers of food grains, sugar, fruits and vegetables, milk and poultry. Rural wages have increased in real terms much faster than earlier. Rural real consumption per capita has increased four times faster. Because of these developments, the percentage of the population below the poverty line has fallen much faster in the period 2004 to 2011 than it did in the previous 10-year period. As a result, the number of people below the poverty line has come down by 13.8 crores. Friends, education has been a key element of our strategy to increase the productive capacity of our economy and improve access to better jobs. I have myself been a beneficiary of liberal scholarships and public investment in education. I can therefore well understand the critical importance of investing in education. I take great pride in the fact that we have transformed the educational landscape of our country. Through Sarv Siksha Abhyan, through new scholarships for scheduled castes, scheduled tribes, other backward classes and minorities, and with the focus on the girl, child, and young women, we have widened educational opportunities. We have set up new universities, new institutes of science and technology, new industrial training centers, and enabled the flowering of individual enterprise in skill building and education. I also feel satisfied with our legislative effort. Despite unprecedented parliamentary holdups, we have passed several important laws that seek to empower our people and our democratic institutions. I do not wish to elaborate on our achievements in the economic arena. These are spelled out in detail, booklet, which has been separately distributed, and I would be happy to answer questions. There are, however, three points which I would like to make. First, I'm concerned that we have not been as successful as we need to be in generating employment in the manufacturing sector. This is an aspect of performance which we are working hard to correct. We need a much stronger effort to support in support of small and medium enterprises, which can be a major source of good quality employment. Our manufacturing strategy 
gives high priority to this objective for the future. Second, we have also not been as successful in controlling inflation as we would have wished. This is primarily because food inflation has increased. However, we should remember that those who produce food gain from higher price. Also, our inclusive policies have put more money in the hands of the weaker sections. To keep food prices in control, we need to increase supplies and also improve marketing arrangements and logistics. This is especially important for items which are perishable, such as fruits and vegetables. Much of this work lies in the domain of the states. I'm happy to say that the Food Security Act that we have passed will, to some extent, shield the common man from rising food prices. The worry about inflation is legitimate, but we should also recognize that incomes for for most people have increased faster than inflation. I have already mentioned that real wages in rural areas have increased faster than before. Per capita consumption in both rural and urban areas has increased significantly. Third, we are deeply committed to the objective of combating corruption. An array of historical legislation has been enacted to make the work of the government transparent and accountable. Governance has been made more answerable as never before. Most of you have been routinely using the Right to Information Act to access government documents which was not possible earlier. There is much public concern on high-profile allegations of corruption, notably in regard to 2G spectrum allocations, coal block allocations, and cases related to land. We have taken major steps to change the existing procedures for allocation of spectrum and coal by shifting to auctions so that these problems do not arise in future. Where some decisions taken earlier when allocations were made administratively have come under question, they are being investigated. Any wrongdoing will be punished through due process of law. Land issues are in the domain of state governments and we have consistently advised state governments to ensure transparency in these cases. Let me conclude with a few words about the external environment. The one lesson we shall all learn from our experience over the past decade is that the world around us is becoming more challenging. This is both a function of our greater integration with the world and of the international community's expectations from a rising India. This is India's manifest destiny. We should recognize it as such and learn to deal with it. India will continue to invest in its defense and national security, in providing security to its own people and ensuring regional security and stability. At the same time, we will continue to seek better relations with our immediate neighbors, knowing that the destiny of the Indian subcontinent is linked through a shared history and a shared geography. It has also been my effort to build long-term, stable, and mutually beneficial relations with all major powers and all our Asian neighbors. We should continue to benefit from global opportunities 
and contribute to global efforts in creating and managing global institutions to deal with global challenges. Friends, I have enormous confidence in our people's ability to deal with challenges at home. In a few months time, after the general election, I will hand the baton over to a new Prime Minister. I hope it will be a UPA chosen Prime Minister and our party will work to that end in the campaign for the general election. I am confident that the new generation of our leaders will also guide this great nation successfully through the uncharted and uncertain waters of global change. As we enter the new year, we will continue to implement our policies with vigor and commitment, aiming to revive growth, promote enterprise, generate employment, eliminate poverty, and ensure the safety and security of all our people, particularly our women and children. Our government will work ceaselessly till its last day. Thank you and Jai. I uh, thank the Honorable Prime Minister for his uh, opening remarks. The first question would go to the Honorable Representative of the Press Trust of India, Mr. Ajay Kaul, or his colleague right there. My request would be that uh, while I'll try and identify as many people as possible, when you ask the question, if you could identify yourself and the organization that you represent. Uh, hello, sir. Ajay from PTI. So my question is, after this uh, assembly elections, there is a... After the assembly elections, the Congress, I mean, in which Congress faced drubbing, much of churning is going on within Congress. Do you think uh, Congress should now uh, formally announce a PM candidate? Well, the Congress President has already answered that question. We will announce the, our candidate for the Prime Ministership at an appropriate time. The second question would go to the Honorable Representative of the Denik Bhaskar newspaper, Mr. Prakash Pandey, if he's there, if he could identify himself. Pankaj Pandey. Prime Minister Ji, before you told me, you said that the new Prime Minister will be able to complete your two terms. My question is that from UPA 1 to UPA 2, लगातार एक के बाद एक करप्शन के इशूज आए हैं आपके मिस्टर क्लीन की जो इमेज थी आपको नहीं लगता कि आप जब कुर्सी छोड़ने को हैं तो वो इमेज दागदार हुई है और उसकी वजह से इस देश में एक नई पार्टी आम आदमी पार्टी जैसे दल ने जन्म लिया है वेल एज फार एज दर्जेज ऑफ करप्शन और कंसर्न मोस्ट ऑफ दीज चार्जेस रिलेट टू दीरियड ऑफ यूपीए वन the coal block allocations as well as the 2G spectrum allocation, they were both in the era of the UPA1. We went to the electorate on the basis of our performance in that period and the people of India re-entrusted re the people of India gave us the mandate to govern for another five years. So, whether these issues which have been raised from time to time by the media, sometimes by the CAG, sometimes by court, one must never forget that they belong to a period which was not the period of UPA two but pe period relating to previous five years and the people of India entrusted us with new responsibilities knowing full well. So the people of India do not seem to have paid heed to all these charges of corruption which are levied against me or for my party. 
The third question would go to the representative of the Times of India, Mr. Rajiv Deshpande. Uh, sir, you have to switch on the mic. Hello. Yeah. Uh, sir, Rajiv Deshpande from Times of India. Sir, you've just said that these uh, many of these uh, corruption cases related to UPA one, and thereafter you return to power, and you are completing your second term in office. At the same time, sir, these uh, scandals, whether it's Commonwealth Games, 2G or coal allocations, have cost your government a great deal. So when you look back at it, were there some things that you would rather have done differently and what would they be? Well, I feel somewhat sad because I was the one who insisted that spectrum allocations should be transparent, it should be fair, it should be equitable. I was the one who insisted that coal block allocations should be allocated on the basis of auctions. These facts are forgotten. The opposition has a vested interest. Sometimes the media play into their hands as well. And therefore, I have every reason to believe that when history is written of this period, we will come out unscathed. This is not to say that there was no irregularities. There were irregularities, but the dimensions of the problems have been overstated by the media, by the CAG sometimes, and by other entities. The uh, next question goes to the Honorable Representative of CNN and IBN, Pallavi Ghosh. I'm from CNN IP. Need to switch on the mic, please. It's on. I'm Pallavi. I'm from CNN IP. You did indicate in your opening speech that you rule yourself out of a third term should the UPA come back to power. So is it Rahul Gandhi's time? Would you want him to be named as a prime ministerial candidate? And do you rule out an active political life after 2014 elections for yourself? Well, I have indicated in my opening remarks that I am not going to be a candidate for the prime ministership if the UPA were to come back into power. Rahul Gandhi has outstanding credentials to be nominated as the presidential candidate and I hope our party will take that decision at an appropriate time. The next question will go to the representative of ABP News, Mr. Shazi Zama. ABP News, Shazi Zama. In the last 9-10 years, what do you think of the مشکل وقت آیا کہ آپ کو لگا کہ آپ کو استیفہ دے دینا چاہیے I've never felt like resigning at any time I've enjoyed doing my work I've tried to do my work with all honesty with all sense of integrity without regard for fear or favor The next question goes to the honorable representative of uh, the Malayalam Manorma Mr. Sachatanan Murthy Right there please Sir, Sachidan and Moti here. Sir, so, uh, basically looking at UPA 1 and UPA 2, uh, UPA 1 benefited from having a common minimum program, an active uh, coordination committee, but you jettisoned that for UPA 2. Did it come in the way because you shed uh, very valuable allies like uh, Trinamool and DMK? Do you think in by hindsight, do you think UPA 3, if it comes to power, should have a CMP? Well, it's too early to, to judge the shape of things to come for UPA 3, I am confident that when the time comes, there will be enough, I th 
number of people who would recognize that a coalition guided by the Congress party of the type that the UPA regime has been is something which is required, which is eminently needed to carry out the social and economic revolution that we want this country to experience, to get rid of poverty, ignorance, and disease that afflict millions of people in our countries even now. The next question goes to the Honorable Representative of the Business Standard newspaper, Aditi Fadis, please. Prime Minister Aditi Padnis from the Business Standard newspaper. Uh, the Congress uh, defeat in the assembly elections, uh, in a review of chief ministers, many chief ministers, most of them in fact said that uh, their defeat was uh, because of uh, price rise. So does it hurt that uh, all the blame is being laid at your door? And also, uh, we noticed that uh, the diesel prices have not been hiked this year. We also hear that subsidized uh, gas cylinders, the number has already gone up from 6 to, to 9 and it's likely to go up to 12. So does this mean your government is reviewing uh, its policy on subsidies uh, as a fallout of the defeat in the assembly elections? Well, what is going to happen in months to come, I would not like to speculate, certainly not in this forum, but I will be honest enough to say that it could be that the price rise was a factor in the, the people stirring against the Congress party. And I have explained the reasons why price rise took place for reasons beyond our control, because international commodity prices were rising, because international energy prices were rising, and these were the factors which made it difficult for us to control prices as effectively as we could have done. But having said that, I would also like to say that we have taken enough measures to protect the weaker, weaker sections of our economy and our society against rising prices. The public distribution system has been stabilized. Prices of public distribution for food grains have not, increased, have not been increased since 2003. And what is more is that through instrumentalities like the Manrega, Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Program, we have ensured that the rural wages earned by the agricultural laborers are indexed at the rate of inflation, they provide a certain measure of protection to these seg segments of our society, and these factors should not be lost sight of. The next question goes to the representative from the Urdu press, Mr. S.M. Asif, please. आप मैं आपसे मेरा सवाल है कि सच्चर कमिटी की रिपोर्ट पर जब मैनिफेस्टो आपका आया था तो आपने कहा था हम लागू करेंगे आपने इन पांच सालों में बहुत सारी स्कीम माइनॉरिटीज के लिए दी लेकिन ये क्या वजह है कि ये माइनॉरिटी की स्कीम आम तक नहीं पहुंच पाती हमने सच्चर कमिटी की सफारशों को लागू करने में काफी काम किया है और मुझे दुख से कहना पड़ता है कि ये तमाम आम तक नहीं पहुंच सका ये ये भी ठीक है कि कुछ ऐसी बातें हैं जो अभी करनी बाकी हैं कुछ कोर्ट्स में पड़ी हैं कुछ और कुछ प्रॉब्लम्स आई हैं जिसकी वजह से और चीजें को लागू नहीं किया जा सका लेकिन जहां तक हमारे गवर्नमेंट का ताल्लुक है स्कॉलरशिप्स फॉर माइनॉरिटीज हैव गॉन अप ट्रिमेंडसली मौलाना आजाद फेलोशिप्स हैव इंक्रीज सब्सटेंशियली एंड द द 
the program for multidisciplinary approaches to minority concentrated districts in 90 districts of our country have been put in place. So enough has been done, but I would be the last person to say that there is no scope for doing more. The next question goes to the Honorable Representative of the Dainik Jagran newspaper, Mr. Raj Kishore. Right there, please. Ramanthi Ji, Namaskar. I am Raj Kishore from Dainik Jagran. My question is, in the last 10 years, the most important thing is that the most important thing is that the Congress party is saying that you don't give a right time for the right time. What do you think of the most important thing in the last 10 years? And do you think of the most important thing that you have to say and you can't say it at any time? جہاں تک بولنے کا سوال ہے جب بھی ضرور پڑی ہے پارٹی فورم میں میں ضرور بولتا رہا ہوں اور آگے بھی بولتا رہا ہوں گا The next question goes to the representative from the Hindustan Times Mr. Shubhudro Chatterjee If I get the name correctly, write there please So this is Shobhadra Chatterjee from Hindustan Times. Sir, with the elections due in uh, barely four months, are you still hopeful about pushing some more reforms agenda? And if so, sir, what will be your priorities? Well, reform is not an event, it is a process. And therefore, so long as we are in power, we will continue to push the cause of reform wherever there is scope for it. And if the circumstances permit to go forward the next question uh, the next question goes to the honorable representative of the times now navika kumar please so i'm navika kumar from times now and my question to you is again related to corruption uh, you time and again every year have written to your ministers uh, to let down, uh, uh, write down and submit to your office all their business interests uh, so that decisions taken by them can be transparent. Now we see a similar example happening in a Congress rule state in Himachal Pradesh, Veer Bhadra Singh, sitting in cabinet meetings deciding on issues uh, that are related to a company when his family and he himself have business involvement with that company. Do you think that's proper? I'm sorry, uh, I'm not able to comment on what you are referring to happening in Himachal Pradesh. I have seen some newspapers reports. I have also received a letter on 29th of December by Shri Arun Jaitley, but I haven't had the time to apply my mind to it about what is the truth in these allegations. Next question goes to the representative of uh, NDTV Hindi, Mr. Himanshu Shekhar, please. Yeah, well, we will. Prime Minister, sir, uh, I had the privilege to attend your first press conference after you became the Prime Minister. At that time, all of us had this perception that Manmohan Singh has a very clean image a very non-political person has become the Prime Minister, an economist has become the Prime Minister with a good proven track record. Nine and a half years later, how do you think an Aam Aadmi now perceives you as a politician, as a Prime Minister? Well, I am the same person as I was nine years ago. There has been no change. I say it with all sincerity that I have tried to serve this country with utmost dedication and commitment and with utmost integrity. I have never used my office to enrich or to reward my friends or my relatives. The next question goes to the representative from the Washington Post. Rama Lakshmi, please. Mr. Um, I would like to ask you about the state of India-U.S. relations now. Uh, this has been a big agenda in UPA 1 with the nuclear deal. Uh, but now as, you, as your term comes to an end, it looks like it has hit rock bottom again. Would you like to comment on that? Well, our government attaches highest priority 
to strengthen the strategic partnership between our two countries. There have been recently some hiccups, but I sincerely believe that these are temp temporary admiration and diplomacy should be given a chance to resolve these issues that have arisen. Next question goes to the representative from the DY365, Rama Sarma. Thank you, sir. Uh, so my question is that that uh, difficult terrain has become a very common region by those uh, implement, government implementation, project implementation agency in the northeast. Whether it is the border incomplete Indo-Bangladesh Indo border, uh, border issue or incomplete uh, Silsar Lamding Board Convention railway uh, project. So what is the things that do you feel? Do you uh, your government has ever tried to overcome this difficult terrain issue? No Difficult terrain is always a, a common phrase for the uh, government implement, project implementation agency in the Northeast. Terrain, yeah. Whether it is incomplete border issue, well, incomplete uh, fencing of the border issue. Well, that's very true. Uh, I mean, if you're talking about uh, fencing of the border. Yeah, and I, the incomplete that other project also in the yes, Assam or Northeast. I, I, I think Fencing and other, some of these other projects have been facing some difficulties because of difficulties of terrain. There is no doubt about that. Sure, can I ask one more question no. regarding the animals distinct, rhino killings, sir? This is very important for us. So rhino killing, uh, killings has become rampant in Assam. Uh, Assam government take, uh, raised forest guard, uh, forest battalion to uh, stop this, but still this is going mm -hmm. on. Do you feel the uh, central government should step in to protect rhino? I, rhino is a national asset. Every effort should be made and will be made to protect this precious animal. The next question goes to Mr. Alok Mehta, please. Pradhan Mantri Ji, आपने चूंकि एक बड़ा लंबा अरसा देखा है प्रधानमंत्री के रूप में भी वित्त मंत्री के रूप में अपोजिशन लीडर के रूप में और अब जिस तरह से इलेक्शन हो रहे हैं लाइक लीडर्स के नाम पर ही वोट चुकी है आपकी पार्टी भी बताई कर रही कि पहले ही प्रधानमंत्री का नाम तय हो जाए तो आपको लगता है कि हमारे सिस्टम में भी कभी मतलब पार्लियामेंट को विचार करना होगा कि कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन में चेंज करके प्रेजिडेंशियल सिस्टम होना चाहिए ताकि गठबंधन की राजनीति में जिस तरह दिक्कतें आपको आई होंगी या दबाव आए होंगे देश के विदेश के उससे निपटने में अगले नेतृत्व को लीडरशिप को सुविधा हो आई हैवन थॉट थ्रू दिस क्वेश्चन इन एनी डेप्थ बट इट इज बाय प्रिलिमिनरी रिएक्शन दैट द पार्लियामेंट्री सिस्टम ऑफ गवर्नमेंट इज द बेस्ट सूटेड फॉर ए कंट्री ऑफ इंडिया कॉम्प्लेक्सिटी of india's diversity that a presidential type of system would be counterproductive next question goes to the representative from indi tv english mr sunil prabhu uh, mr prime minister sir you know my question is uh, very simple and uh, straightforward on the issue i know there have been lot of questions on corruption on various other issues but personally for you many will accuse you as you said history has to be kind and look at you and you'll come out on skate but many will look at you personally as being unable to actually act or rein in your own cabinet minister the fact that you allowed a situation to go out of hand that you failed to act politically which was required and that you kept look going back to a co group or to various other people but refused to act and that is why we came to a stage where even the supreme court asked the prime minister's office and even indicted it for various acts of omission and commission so how do you respond to that politically and how do you see your legacy because of the failure of you to act in an in a well, i i honestly believe that history will be kinder to me than the contemporary media or the power <laughs> or for that matter the opposition parties in parliament I, I, 
I, uh, I cannot, I think, divulge all the things that take place in the cabinet system of government. I think taking into account the circumstances and the compulsions of a coalition policy, I have done as best as I could do under the circumstances. The representative from Z News, please. थैंक यू मनीष जी और प्रधानमंत्री जी सबसे पहले आपका धन्यवाद कि मुझे ये सवाल पूछने का मौका मिला मैं आपको जी मीडिया के एक नेशनल चैनल और आठ रीजनल चैनल के 200 मिलियन व्यूवर्स की तरफ से आपसे एक सवाल पूछना चाहता हूं कि जब आप कहते हैं कि प्रधानमंत्री के तौर पर आपका जो है कार्यकाल अब आप पूरा करने जा रहे हैं और बैठन आप राहुल गांधी को आप इंडिकेट कर रहे हैं मेरा सवाल आपसे ये है कि जब मुकाबला होगा तो राहुल गांधी वर्सेज नरेंद्र मोदी का मुकाबला होता है नेचुरली आप राहुल गांधी के साथ खड़े होंगे क्योंकि आपकी पार्टी के लेकिन क्या आप मानते हैं कि मुकाबला बराबरी का होगा और 2014 में वाकई आप राहुल गांधी के नेतृत्व में सरकार बना पाएंगे या आपको विपक्ष में बैठना पड़ेगा थैंक यू वेरी मच आई फुल कॉन्फिडेंट दैट नेक्स्ट प्राइम मिनिस्टर विल बी फ्रॉम द यूपीए पोल्यूशन एंड दैट विदाउट डिस्कसिंग द मेरिट्स ऑफ मिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी I sincerely believe that it would be disastrous for the country to have Narendra Modi as the Prime Minister. The next question goes to the representative from the Indian Express, uh, Mr. Manish Chibber, if he's here, please. Yeah, right here. Here, here, here. Um. Hello. Sir, Manish Chibber from Indian Express. Sir, the BJP and Mr. Modi's, uh, you know, uh, charge against you is that you have been a weak prime minister. So, do you think, uh, you know, your party has a role to play in that uh, projection of this view? Well, I do not believe that I have been a weak prime minister. That is for the historians to judge, and the BJP and and its associates may say whatever they like, but. If by strong prime minister you mean that you preside over the mass massacre of innocent citizens in the streets of Ahmedabad, that is the measure of strength. I do not believe that sort of strength this country needs, least of all in its prime minister. The uh, representative from uh, the Hindu, uh, Mr. Praveen Swami, do I see him? Right there, please. Prime Minister, Mr. Swami, on a slightly different topic, it's been widely reported that in your first tenure, uh, you were on the verge, by some accounts, of a historic deal with Pakistan on Jammu and Kashmir. When you look back on your two terms, will you feel historic opportunities were missed? And uh, do you believe the prospects of uh, durable peace settlement? Uh, Will 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 still remain in reach for your successor. Well, I have d tried to improve relations with all our neighbors to the best of my ability, and at one time it appeared that important breakthrough was in sight. Even in Pakistan, for example, the fact that General Musharraf had to make way. For a different setup, I think that led to the process not getting, not moving further. But I still believe that good relations between India and Pakistan are very essential for this subcontinent of ours to realize its full development potential to get rid of poverty. Ignorance and disease, which has been the inevitable lot of millions and millions of people in this subcontinent of ours. And now, the representative of the public broadcaster, the person from Doordarshan, please. There is. Prime Minister Ji, I am Ashok Shirvastav, DD News. Se. प्रधानमंत्री जब आप वित्त मंत्री थे तो आप जो आर्थिक उदारवाद की जो नीतियां शुरू की आपकी वित्त मंत्री के रूप में उस विरासत को आज भी देश याद करता है 
अब आज जबकि आपने ऐलान किया है कि अगली बार आप प्रधानमंत्री पद की दौड़ में नहीं होंगे तो प्रधानमंत्री के तौर पर आपकी विरासत को आपको क्या लगता है देश कैसे याद रखेगा और इससे इसके साथ एक छोटी सी चीज और जोड़ना चाहूंगा कि पिछले दस सालों में आपकी उपलब्धियों का लेखा जो का देश में है लेकिन आपको क्या लगता है क्या दस सालों में आपने मिस किया जो आप हासिल करना चाहते थे देश के लिए जो आप हासिल नहीं कर पाए इन दस सालों में वेल आई हैन एज वेल एज आई कूड अंडर दर्कमस्टेंसेज इट इज फॉर दिस्टोरियंस टू जज how successful i have been my own feeling is that we have maintained and sustained the momentum of rapid economic growth and if you look at the period of 9 years that we have completed compare it with the preceding 6 years of the nda i think it it emerges very clearly that in most indicators of performance our performance has been superior to that of the nda period the representative from the digital media sheila bhat from the read us please right there sir i am sheila bhat from readis.com in india abroad sir do you think the experiment of the dual center of power with the party president was more powerful than the pmo has worked very well in last 10 years was this division of real power and a formal power necessary and do you think that was this arrangement a liability or an asset to your upa government well i can only speak about the system as it has worked i sincerely believe that an arrangement where the congress president and the prime minister do not happen to be the same person in the circumstances it has worked exceedingly well for me it has been a remarkable achievement that i have been able to complete 10 years of my prime ministership without any hiccups in the relationship between the congress party and the prime minister or for that matter the government for me mrs gandhi's support has been enormous help in dealing with very complex issues and the fact that she was there to back me up facilitated my task as prime minister in more than one ways the representative from the headlines today please mr kartik sharma yeah i'm trying so i'm kartik sharma from headlines today Uh, so my question to you is that why was it not possible for you in your tenure as nine and a half years as the prime minister to visit Pakistan? Well, I, I would very much like to go to Pakistan. I was born in a village which is now part of West Punjab, but as prime minister of a country, I should go. To to visit pakistan if conditions are appropriate to achieve solid results i have thought of it many time but ultimately i felt that the circumstances were not appropriate for my visit i still haven't given up hope of going to pakistan before i complete my tenure as prime minister a representative the representative from the tribune please mr kv prasad do i see him yeah Mr. Prime, Mr. Prime Minister, I'm Prasad from the Tribune. Uh, at the end of the first year in 2005, the Prime Minister's office speech, which you delivered, said you rated seven out of ten for your government. Now that is a decade in the office, how would be on a scale of ten? I have no understanding. Uh, KB, would you repeat your question, please? Yeah, Mr. Prime. Mr. Prime. Yeah, can you hear me, please? Yeah. Yeah, Mr. Prime Minister, at the end of 2005. The PMO speech said you rated your government seven out of ten. Now that the ten years of office have been completed, how would you rate it on a scale of ten? Well, it is for you people to judge me. As far as I am concerned, I feel I have done reasonably well. The growth process that we sustained in the last ten years, despite the global financial crisis, despite the eurozone crisis. 
and considering also what is happening in other emerging countries like Brazil, like South Africa, like Indonesia, I don't think ours is a story which can be described as non-successful -success or even full. The next question goes to the representative of the Outlook magazine, Sabha Nakvi, please. Uh, good morning, Prime Minister. Uh, when you came in, you came in with this very clean image and now 10 years have gone past. And we have another pol political phenomenon in Delhi, which is the Arvind K. Jival Aam Admi Party phenomenon, which has also asked for a review of electric companies. So my question to you is twofold. One, how do you rate the phenomenon of ARP? And secondly, as someone who understands policies, economics, do you think we need a CAG audit of companies which supply power? And is it a good idea? Well, the people of India have reposed confidence in the ARP party in Delhi. I think we must respect the democratic process and it is only time will tell whether this experience is capable of dealing with the challenges that our economy and our polity faces. It is too early, I think they have been there only less than a week. They must be given time and chance to justify themselves. The gentleman right here, please, the representative from the Indian CD, if I identify him properly. Prasad Mantri Ji, I am Mithilesh, Mithilesh Kumar from India News. बार बार आप कहते हैं कि राहुल गांधी हमारी कैबिनेट में आ जाएं, शामिल हो जाएं, या राहुल गांधी के लिए आप कुर्सी छोड़ने के लिए तैयार बैठते हैं लेकिन हर बार मना कर देते हैं आपको तकलीफ नहीं होती और दूसरा सवाल कांग्रेस पार्टी में किसी से बात कर लीजिए हर कोई कहता है कि मनमोहन सिंह सरकार की नेगेटिव इमेज की वजह से कांग्रेस पार्टी की करारी हार हो रही है वेल दैट सर्टनली इज नॉट माई व्यू एंड इफ यू फील दैट देर आर पीपल होल्ड दैट ओपिनियन आई कैन नॉट हेल्प इट इट इज फॉर हिस्टोरियंस टू जज what I have done, what I have not done, what were my weaknesses, what were my strengths. As far as I am concerned, I, I am convinced that considering the circumstances under which I had to work, because of the global slowdown, we have done reasonably well. We have delivered the highest rate of growth in the first nine years of our government highest ever since this government, this country got going as an independent country. No, I, I have always felt that our government would have been strengthened if Rahul Gandhi was part of the government, but Rahul felt that he had responsibilities to the parties which did not permit him to join the government and I respect his sentiment. The lady there in the corner, please, if I identify her correctly, Redu Mittal. Hello. Mr. Prime Minister, good afternoon. It's, I think, afternoon now. Uh, sir, there's been a clamoring within the Congress party that they needed a political phase before they went to the elections. Now, did the Congress leadership ever hint to you that maybe it would have been better if you had stepped down before the elections? Because you see, from whatever you've told us in the last one hour, you have not really taken the blame for any of the acts of commission and commission of this government. Uh, doesn't the buck stop also with the Prime Minister on issues of corruption and price rise? The two issues which have been identified by Rahul Gandhi as the reasons for the defeat of the party in the assembly elections? Well, I have said what I, I have to say, but nobody has asked me to step down because of any inadequacies that may have characterized my tenure as Prime Minister. Venkat, 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 I've, Mr. Venkat, I've asked Venkat, I've identified Venkat, please. Mr. Prime Minister Vanakam, Venkat Raman from Dhanamala. I just wanted to ask two clarifications from you. One, when you talk about Tamil Nadu, there are two major issues you know well. One is the Sri Lankan problem, Sri Lankan Tamil issue. Other one is Tamil Nadu fisherman. According to you, 
When are you going to find a permanent solution for the Tamil Nadu fishermen, number one? Number two, when you, your government is so concerned about Devayani, the Indian diplomat, but at the same time, you are not bothered about the Sri Lankan Tamils, which is a part of the Indian origin. Why this partiality? Why the stepmother treatment towards the Sri Lankan Tamils? Well, it is not true that we are not concerned about the well-being of the Tamil population in Sri Lanka. We have consistently made every effort to persuade the government of Sri Lanka to address the genuine problems of the Tamil population of Sri Lanka. We will continue to do so in the future as well. As far as the fishermen's fate is concerned, we have on innumerable number of occasions discussed this matter with the government of Sri Lanka and now we find that that in the north, no, northern Sri Lanka we have a government of the Tamil population themselves. We feel that there is an opportunity for the Tamil population of Sri Lanka and the Tamil population in Tamil Nadu to sit together to work out an arrangement between the fishermen of the two countries which will be mutually satisfactory. I think this thing is going to happen. This is the only way in which this problem of fishermen in both countries can be resolved. Liz Matthews from the Mint, please. Liz Matthews from the Mint. <laughs> Sir, what would you say as the best and the lowest moment in your term as the Prime Minister in the last one decade? Uh, Liz, could you repeat your question, please? What would you say as the lowest and the best moment or achievement in your term as the Prime Minister in the last one decade? Well, uh, I will need time to reflect on this, <laughs> but certainly I think for the best moment for me was when we were able to strike a nuclear deal with the United States to end the nuclear apartheid which had sought to stifle the processes of social and economic change and technical progress of our country in many ways. The gentleman in the tan coat there, please. Oh, aapke piche, Sanjay, aapke piche. Aapke piche, uske baad na aap sabhi ko bari dene ke koshish kar rahe hain. Unko, aha, unko. Could you identify yourself, please? Sir. Paas tak se. Jis tarah se aam aadmi party ne corruption ko core issue banaya aur Delhi ka election jeet gayi badi partyon ko piche chhod kar sarkar bana liya. Aapko kya lagta hai ki national parties ke liye badi partyon ke liye isme koi message hai aur isse kya aapko lagta hai ki Lok Sabha chunaav mein ab Congress ke samne Narendra Modi ke alawa Arvind Kejriwal bhi ek challenge ho gaye. Well, corruption is an issue and certainly the AAP party has been able to make a success of their concern for eradication of corruption. Whether they will succeed or not, I think that only time will tell. I am feeling that dealing with corruption is not <coughs> an easy process, even though there may be opportunities as well as challenges. We must collectively grapple with the task of dealing with corruption. This is not a matter which, which only one party can accomplish. Various political parties have to work together to deal with this monster. Harish Gupta from the Lokmat, please. Mr. Prime Minister, my name is Harish Gupta. I would like to ask you and remind you of 2010 when you addressed the press conference saying, that you have an unfinished agenda and lot of things to be done and now you have only I think three more months before the elections are declared. Do you have anything particular in mind which you want to do and couldn't do so far? Because well, you have already made it clear that you are not a candidate for UPA 3 
maybe in a coalition if something is thrown up and the party or upa coalition partners may come back to you that you have done so wonderfully well that country cannot really survive without you as the prime minister for the third term either thank you well i think the five months that are there with us is still i think a long period of time for us to revive the growth impulses of our economy if i am successful in doing that i think i would consider a job having been well done george abraham from uh, the deepika please right there so prime minister i am george kalewayiril from deepika malayalam daily you know you are going to my state kerala tonight and uh, two burning issues are uh, in kerala right now one is the kasturi rengan report which is hurting the sentiments of the farmers and the other is the lpg price rise and the will you be announcing at least there was indications that you will be the government will be coming out with 12 subsidized cylinders will you be announcing that and will you be announcing a relook into the kasturi rangan report well as far as the kasturi rangan report is concerned this is still in the stage of being discussed discussed with various state governments no final decision has been taken and as far as the raising the number of cylinders that will be made available to the, to the people i think no decision has been taken as of now sanjay mishra please could you identify the publication that you represent sir main sanjay mishra amar ujala se hu mera sawal sir sikh dango ko leke hai jab aap pradhan mantri ke roop mein aaye the to aapne amritsar ja ke sikhon ke ghav pe maram lagaya tha और उनको न्याय दिलाने की बात कही थी पर 10 साल बीत गए एक तरफ आप स्नूप गेट के लिए एक स्पेशल टास्क फोर्स जुडिशल बनाते हैं लेकिन सिख विरोधी दंगों के जो पीड़ित है आज भी सड़क पे दौड़ रहे हैं न्याय के लिए क्या एक प्रधानमंत्री के रूप में आपको इस बात का अफसोस नहीं है कि 10 साल तक आप उनको न्याय नहीं दिला पाए वेल इफ यू टॉकिंग अबाउट six who suffered in 1984 riots i think our government has done quite a lot and i use the opportunity of a discussion in parliament to publicly apologize to the sikh community the on behalf of the government of our country for what had happened in 1984 it should never have happened and as far as the compensation is concerned i think one can never give adequate compensation to compensate for the loss of valuable lives but wherever possible we had provided succor to the suffering fa- families of the six of 1984 right manani chatterjee if i see her behind the cameras Prime Minister, sir, I am Manini Chatterjee of the Telegraph. You have already declared that you will not be—you are not a candidate for a UPA three if it were coming, if it so happened that the UPA three were to come. But you have also said that uh, Narendra Modi as Prime Minister would be disastrous for the country. So after the 2014 election, do you plan to just retire and write your memoirs and play with your grandchildren, or do you? Are you going to play an active role either in the opposition or in the government, even if you were not the prime minister? I haven't thought through. I think that process. I, it's too early. I have still five months to complete my present tenure, and therefore, when, when I reach that stage, I will cross that bridge. IBN Seven C, Prabhanjit. मिस्टर प्राइम मिनिस्टर मैं नीरज हूं आईबीएन सेवन न्यूज चैनल से मैं आपसे पूछना चाहता हूं कि आपके करीब साढ़े नौ साल के कार्यकाल में ये एक परसेप्शन रहा कि फैसले दस जनपद में होते हैं उनका ऐलान सेवन आरसीआर या पीएमओ से होता है कांग्रेस अध्यक्ष सोनिया गांधी या उपाध्यक्ष राहुल गांधी का अगर इशारा भी हो तो सरकार उसे अमल में लाने में उसे उसका ऐलान करने में बिल्कुल देर नहीं लगाती इस परसेप्शन इस छवि के बारे में आप क्या कहेंगे वेल इट इज नॉट ए डिस 
president or the vice president, if they have any views, they ought to be reflected in the thinking of the government to the extent that it is possible. And I think it is not a disadvantage or a drawback in the system that we have operated. The fact that Mrs. Gandhi or for that matter Rahul Gandhi were there to back the government up is something which has enabled us to deal with many difficult moments in these nine and a half years. There were, of course, up to times when they differed from what the government had done. The government reconsidered those issues, and I don't think this is wrong or a disadvantage to make correction if the party leadership feels that such corrections were required in the national interest. The Honorable Lady there in the black coat, please. Could you identify yourself? Smita Prakash of ANI. Uh, you said, talked a lot about your pride and satisfaction in many decisions that you took as Prime Minister. What would be your regrets, at least two regrets that you had that in the nine and a half years you couldn't deliver on something that you wanted to very badly? Thank you. Well, I, I'm sorry I haven't thought through this, this matter. But certainly, I would like to do a lot more in the area of health care, health care for children, health care for women, the national rural health mission that we started has achieved impressive results, but a lot more needs to be done. The lady right there behind her, please. Yeah, uh, Padma Rao Sundarji, uh, Dr. Manmohan Singh, I write for Die Welt, German newspaper. Um, on behalf of the European media, I'd like to ask you, you started your address by uh, speaking of better times in terms of the economy. Um, from the foreign investor's point of view, and uh, since we are in the era of coalition governments pretty much, would you say that uh, the gloom is lifting also in terms of FDI, foreign investment? What would you like to say to foreign investors uh, who have uh, for you know, the several years been a little skeptical about investing? Well, in India? India provides a hospitable environment for foreign direct investment. We will continue to do so. We will continue to improve upon our practices wherever they are needed. Sindhi Patrakarta ke Pratinidhi. Sir, thank you very much, Manish ji, ki aapne ek bahut chote samachar patra ko bhistan diya, jahan humare itte bade bade channel aur patrakar hain. Mani Pradhan Mantri ji, mera aapse ek sawal hai ki pichle 10 saalon mein aapne bahut hi aarthik sudhar ke karyakram kiye, jo aapne bataya. Aap RTI bill leke aaye. Recently, you have passed a bill of Lokpal. Now, as you said, there are five months of work. Which bill is the one that you request the opposition and the request the opposition parties to request the parliament to go and the country's and the government's work to finish the bill of Lokpal. As Rahul Ji said in a week ago in a press conference, that I want to know some of the bills pending, which can be a Arachman bill. क्या आप चाहते हैं कि इस तरह के बिल आपके कार्यकाल से पूर्व पास हो जाए धन्यवाद हमारी कोशिश होगी कि एंटी करप्शन बिल पांच छह बिल हैं जो पार्लियामेंट में पड़े हैं एक ऐसा माहौल पैदा किया जाए कि ये बिल पास हो जाए और हमारी करप्शन के खिलाफ जो लड़ाई है वो आगे बढ़ सकेगी हमारी ये भरपूर कोशिश रहेगी मेला आई थिंक वीमेन्स रिजर्वेशन ऑल्सो हैपन्स टू बी वन सच एरिय निर्बल पाठक Nirbal, would you identify the organization that you represent? Sir, I am Nirbal Pathak, Hindustan. Uh, sir, you have noticed that the question of your image is taken in the image. When you were in the Prime Minister P.V. Narasimha Rao, you were in the Prime Minister, the Prime Minister was your image that you don't tolerate any nonsense. And you are straightforward. In the last 7-8 years, you have felt that you have tolerated a lot of nonsense. And you have felt that you have felt a lot of nonsense. And you have felt that you have felt a lot of nonsense. एक आपकी पार्टी के लोग भी ये कहते हैं कि आप ओवररेटेड इकोनॉमिस्ट हैं और अंडररेटेड पॉलिटिशियन हैं। क्या इसपे आपकी टिप्पणी है? Well, what you think of me or what the country thinks of me is something which I cannot speculate. But I, as I mentioned earlier, 
I have tried to serve my country with the greatest sense of dedication and commitment. When I became Prime Minister, the general perception was that the Congress party has never been able to run a coalition government. The Congress' ability to run a coalition government was to be tested, and we showed that the Congress party can successfully manage the management, manage the coalition to complete not one but two terms. Now, in the process, there have been, I think, some compromises, but I can assure you that those compromises relate to peripheral areas. They do not in any way affect our ability or our keenness to deal with national problems in the, with the objectivity that is necessary. The lady right there, please. Mr. Prime Minister, this is Shweta Rajpal Kohli from NDTV Profit. During UPA 2 tenure, we saw not just a sharp slowdown, but also an immense trust deficit between the industry and the government. Were you really saddened by the sharp criticism that came from some top industry leaders? Also, if we were to identify the domestic factors that led to the slowdown and the trust deficit, what, according to you, tops the list? Well, there were domestic factors as well, but more important was the role of international factors. First, the global slowdown of 2008-2009, then the Eurozone crisis. But I would be the last one to say that there were no domestic factors. There were infrastructure bottlenecks. There were clear bottlenecks in terms of timely clearances of the projects from the point of view of environment and forest clearing. So these were also factors which influenced both the international factors and the domestic factors to combine to contribute to a slowdown in the rate of economic growth. Pardon? Sanjeev Trivedi, please. जी मैं सहारा इंडिया मीडिया को रिप्रेजेंट करता हूं मेरा नाम संजीत त्रिवेदी है पिछले दिनों जब चार राज्यों में चुनावी हार हुई कांग्रेस की तो आपके पार्टी के लोग भी यह मानते नजर आए कि दरअसल यह विपक्ष की उपलब्धि नहीं है बल्कि केंद्र सरकार कई मुद्दों पर कई संजीदा मुद्दों पर नॉन परफॉर्मर साबित हुई और इस कारण से हार हुई इस आलोक में मेरा आपसे यह सवाल है कि क्या आप अपने मंत्रियों का पीरियोडिक अप्रेजल करते हैं और अगर ऐसा है तो क्या उसका बारीकी से रिव्यू भी होता है और आपको लगता है कि इस तरह के रिव्यू को सार्वजनिक किया जाना चाहिए ताकि पता चल सके कौन मंत्री या कौन मंत्रालय नॉन परफॉर्मर हुए वेल इट इज ए ऑन गोइंग प्रोसेस माई ऑफिस मॉनिटर ऑल मेजर सेक्टर पर्टिकुलरली इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर सेक्टर एंड if there are any weaknesses in the functioning of any one particular sector or ministry these things are discussed in the cabinet from time to time the gentleman right there please in the second row right here yeah yeah please afternoon sir uh, my question really relates to the opening uh, part of your uh, comments with you kindly identify so, so sorry siddharth zarabi from cnbc tv18 so at the opening part of your remarks you spoke about growth momentum coming back but the fact on the ground is that if you see prices across all sectors energy prices telecom prices airline prices general consumers from the middle class those prices are running out of hand and you spoke about inflation also you have 5 minutes 5 uh, months left like you said is there any possibility that perhaps because of the political imperatives that this government and your government can get a handle on inflation finally at the very fag end of your tenure well we will certainly make every effort we are trying to do that and the vice president of the congress party mr rahul gandhi convened a meeting of congress chief ministers to discuss what can be done in the congress ruled states to bring prices under control as well may i uh, may i 
apologize from those who I could not identify. Uh, it's uh, there'll be another time. I would like to thank the Honorable Prime Minister and thank all of you for this very stimulating interaction. Once again, my sincerest apologies. I know that a lot of you wanted to ask questions. I've tried my best to go across the hall. The Prime Minister has been extremely patient and has answered your questions. Thank you once again very much. And I promise you that I'll request the Prime Minister to be with us another time to address the questions which uh, the rest of you have. Thank you very much. I sincerely believe that what Mr. Narendra Modi is saying is not going to materialize. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.